Hey everybody, it's Kelly. Welcome back to another episode of Ask a Therapist. Today we're continuing our series about emotional manipulation in churches and we're talking about youth group retreats. This is one I get a lot in comments and I get a lot of emails about too. As many of you know, I used to be a youth pastor and this is one I struggle with on a regular basis because these are things that I used to participate in and used to actually think were good, I think. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I ever thought they were good, but I used to do them and now I look at them and I'm like, what? what was happening. Okay, so I recently posted a video on TikTok and I was responding to Katie Britt's response to the State of the Union address. It's a whole thing. She had this whole very weird video from her kitchen. She's very emotional and there was like just a lot of, a lot of stuff. And a lot of the people who she represents were very critical of her emotion and her overacting and her like, it was cringeworthy at best. And everybody's just like, she's so inauthentic and da 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 da. And I'm watching it and I'm like, man, all I hear is a youth pastor on cry night, right? She's so over the top and she's so emotionally manipulative and it's hard to not see through it. And you're watching all these responses from conservative Republican people and they're like, she's so inauthentic. And I'm just hearing youth pastor on cry night at a retreat or a, or a camp. I can't understand how we're looking at this and they're saying like, yeah, church, yeah, go to youth group, yeah, go to camp. And also this same exact tone is now inauthentic and cringy and all these other things, but it's the same thing, like it's the same tone. But it got me to thinking how many people also saw it and also heard that and it's just so well known that that's an inauthentic tone. Or how many people weren't aware that that was manipulation, like those tones are manipulation, right? So it just really got me thinking about all the different types of camps and youth ministry, like retreats and all those kind of things that are out there and the ways that they are sort of set up and the ways that youth groups in general can be actually kind of harmful to teenagers. And maybe some of you went through these. So I came up with the top five ways that youth retreats and camps are actually super toxic to teenagers. Let's go. Number five, sleep deprivation. This is number five because teenagers are inherently low in sleep anyway. But the sleep deprivation is actually fairly um, intentional in the way that it's sort of set up because if you are sort of sleep deprived and super active and everything, then kind of your emotions are at a high and you're, you're less critical thinking and you are more pliable when it comes to things like your worship at night and cry night, which is typically the last night of a retreat or the third night of camp and all of that, right? Like the, the emotional come to the altar and, and commit your life and confess your sins and all that kind of stuff. Like that night is something that you need to have your walls broken down for. And so lack of sleep is going to do that for you. Also, lack of sleep in the beginning and like getting tired out and everything when you're first there means that you're going to sleep the other nights, which tends to be like better for those running it. The other side of that toxic part that I noticed when I was still a youth and would take leadership roles in running some of these things was it was like a competition on who was more tired. Because if you were more tired, if you're the most tired there, then you were working the most, which means you were giving the most, which means you were the most godly, I think was what we were trying to say. Like if you were the most tired and you got the least amount of sleep, then you were definitely, definitely being used for God the most, I guess. Either way, lack of sleep. That's a problem. If you're really retreating from your life and going away for a period of time, you should come back rested. That's a problem across the board. That's not just like church camps. That's a problem in general. I have a video about it if you wanna check it out. You should come back rested if you're coming back from vacation. Number four, the pace. Again, fairly intentionally, the pace is kept as a go, 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 go. And that is because there's so much information that's sort of thrown at you and there's morning messages and then activities and workshops and lunch and prayer and more workshops and then worship and then more activities. You don't have time to really think through and understand how much what you believe. You just consume, consume, consume the information. That's dangerous because the manipulation that's happening there is assuming that everything that's being fed is to be believed because you're going to this camp, to this retreat and 
of course you're going to believe everything that's being said that's being said with authority and anybody who's there is going to have to be believed because you're there with these people that you trust, right? And of course everything that they say is going to have to be true. Otherwise, why would these people that you trust take you to this place? And if you're not given any time to really process any of it or think through what you actually think about any of it, it's just going to go into your memory as something that, of course, you believe. Also, you're surrounded by other people who look like they believe it. And if they all believe it, shouldn't you? Because if you don't, what's wrong with you? Number three, the music. (sighs) All you have to do is open up TikTok and look up Exvangelical and you will see so much about the emotional manipulation in the way that Christian contemporary music is written. The repetitive nature of the choruses, the chord progression, the key change. There's so much to it that is really meant to move you. And when you're finding yourself moved by a song, the assumption that your brain makes is that you're moved by the words of the song. And if you're moved by the words of the song, then they must be true for you because you're having an emotional reaction to it. So how could it not be true? When in reality, your brain is responding to a chord progression. You're not responding to the fact that you are this terrible deep sinner who will never be any good except for by the redemptive grace of a being in the sky. That's not the thing that is moving your heart, but the emotional manipulation piece of exhaustion, of everyone else being moved, of you assuming that that is what is going on, that's where your brain goes. If you were to say, I don't think I'm actually being moved by these words. If you were to take a minute and say, whoa, 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 is this really what's going on? Do I actually believe these things? We're talking generally about teenagers. Like, that's that target audience for a lot of this stuff. Most of them don't have, like, the ability to do that. And if they do, there's a piece of, I don't want to be singled out if I do this. So even if they do (laughs) kind of look at it and say, I don't feel this way, like, I'm not really feeling this, they feel like there's something wrong with them, so they keep it quiet. And they're like, I have to... I have to follow through with what everyone else is doing because if I don't, then I'm the one who looks out of it and then I am going to have to separate from this group of support that I have and I'm going to look like I'm doing something wrong because everyone else clearly buys into this. Number two, enforced gender politics. Everything is separated by girls and guys and even in some of your more progressive type camps and retreat places that do allow for some Um, some flexibility, I guess you would say, with gender fluidity or people to use non-binary labels, there's still a default separation when you're doing small groups, when you're doing housing, when you're talking to people, when you're talking about how we're created. There is constantly a message of a gender binary and an expectation of falling into that. There's so much cis-normative language and heteronormative language and the understanding of where we fall in that normativity and how we are to understand ourselves based on our sex as assigned at birth. There is a reason why those who are raised in a Christian culture or a high demand religion culture in general come out later in their lives There are reasons for that. And that is because so much of religion has deep, deep in it so many messages of gender binary, of heteronormativity. All of that is so ingrained there. And even in the most progressive places of these teen camps and teen retreats, it's still there. The ones that have adults praying for kids during their prayer time. Men are told to go and pray for the boys and the adult women are told to go and pray for the girls. There's so many rules there about housing and groups and what you should talk to different people about and what you shouldn't. And all of those stereotypes are getting constantly reinforced, intentionally or not intentionally, 
truly doesn't matter because it is constant. It's harmful. The number one thing that is super toxic about youth retreats and youth camps is cry night. Maybe you call it something else. Maybe it's rededication night. Maybe it's just that call to the open altar. And it's hard for me to talk about this one. When I talk about this, I can almost feel the couple of people that I have been able to stay friends with, despite my shift in, um, focus and beliefs around things like this and the fact that so many of them are still in youth ministry, it's hard to lose people, right? I also think that there are things that we need to come to terms with, and this is one of them. The expectation that there's anything appropriate about encouraging in front of a group of people anyone to dedicate their entire lives to anything when they are at an age where their brain is not fully developed, their frontal lobe, and the understanding of the consequences of their actions is not even remotely developed when they are exhausted and emotionally manipulated by the music that has gone on. All of these pieces, and then we put them in front of a possibly dynamic speaker, more likely a trauma dump speaker, and then ask them to make a commitment for the rest of their lives that they don't understand, just so adults can feel proud of themselves about the number of souls that were saved at an event that they put on. That idea is the most manipulative thing I can understand at this point in time. And it's so unfair because those teenagers don't know what's happening and they don't understand and they trust the adults that take them and that trust can be so easily broken in those moments. And the reason that I'm doing this video on this channel where so many of you are outside of teenager age and so many of you are so far beyond these decisions is because so many of you had these experiences and so many of you have felt the ramifications of these things but have not had the words to put to them. And I want you to understand that this is what happened. And this is why some of those pieces are still coming up for you. And this is why those trust pieces are hard and why you don't necessarily know why you still respond to some things from your past, even though you don't feel that way anymore, or why you're not sure how you feel about certain things because it feels wrong to walk away from certain parts of religion, or why you feel bad that you still want to be part of religion, right? Because some of you do. And you know what? That's okay too. If you want to be, you can be. And if you don't want to be, you don't have to be. Everyone deserves the right to make their own decisions about their life. And that's the crux of all of this, is that this emotional manipulation that happens removes people's autonomy to make their own decisions. When you're not able to make your own decisions as a fully formed, fully functional brain and fully functional adult, you have to be able to trust the people who you are safe with to safeguard your life, your decisions. And a lot of people, a lot of us have failed in that regard. Children should have the right to be able to trust the people who are put in charge of them. And you had the right when you were younger to be able to trust the people that were put in charge of you. And if you were involved in any of these things, it can be hard to then look at how to untangle that. So I want to shed some light on that and help you to understand that these were manipulations that were part of your growing up. And that can be why it's hard to untangle those now. It's not impossible. It can be done. There are options options for you. And also that doesn't take away the pain that brought you to that place after these things happen. That's the purpose of this video, just to help you to understand where some of that may have come from. That's it for today. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you all next time. And until then, take care of yourselves and each other.